So this time we're looking at the Argand diagram. Now specifically, what complex numbers and vectors have in common. So it's going to be, this is the key idea for the video. It's useful to be able to think of complex numbers the same way we think of vectors. So that's, that's, our, that's our goal today. So we're going to link the two of them to make our life really, really easy. First of all, an Argand diagram geometrically represents the set of complex numbers. It is a plane where the horizontal axis represents the real numbers and the vertical axis represents the imaginary numbers. So there it is. It's a Cartesian looking plane, but it's actually an Argand diagram. And our real numbers are represented by the x axis and our imaginary numbers are represented by the y axis. Now, any complex number z equals a plus bi is said to be in Cartesian form. Um, below are some complex numbers depicted on the Argand diagram. Let's look at them. So here's our Argand diagram. Now the real number 3 plus i is here. So 3 across and 1i up or just 1 up for the imaginary component. Um, here 2 minus 3i, 2 across and negative 3i down. And you get the idea. So the real components on the x-axis or the real axis and the imaginary components on the y-axis or the imaginary axis. Now, it's probably better to think of these things not as points, but as vectors. All right, now they're vectors. There's little arrows here from the origin out to that point. They're position vectors, but they're also complex numbers. Pretty neat. So now let's play with them as both complex numbers and vectors. So I'm in GeoGebra now. I've got a vector 2 plus 3i, the real component, the imaginary component. See, it looks a lot like a vector. It's a complex number. I can, uh, let's change it. Just move it into the, into the fourth quadrant here. This is uh, 2 minus 3i now. Now, the reason I keep talking about complex numbers and vectors and making sure that we understand that they're linked is because we can do a lot of the things that we do with vectors with complex numbers. So I'm going to uh, put up a second vector now. Uh, let's make this one, let's put it in the first quadrant. So that one's 2 plus 3i, 2 plus 3i. And now what I'm going to do is add those two vectors together. Uh, now, you remember with, uh, sorry, complex numbers together. You remember with vectors, we can just kind of grab one and put it uh, tip to tail and we can add them together. So let's do that. Let's take this 2, 3. Let's move it. Actually, let's move um, the 4, negative 3. All right, so I've taken 4, negative 3 off of the origin, moved it up here to this, and now what we have is 2 plus 3i plus 4 minus 3i equals 6. So we have a complex number plus a complex number, and because it's dragging straight across here, we get just a real component. And it's all done with vectors slash complex numbers. Now, it doesn't matter what the vectors are, or sorry, what the complex numbers are. As long as we're adding our two vectors, we're going to get, sorry, our two complex numbers, we're going to get a resultant complex number as well. So you can see this little picture here. That's just saying that there's a vector and a vector, and we can add them together, just like what we were doing there with our, our um, GeoGebra. We can also just take uh, a complex number and multiply it by a scalar. Right, so here's what a, a vector, two plus, oh, sorry, a complex number, two plus three i. Now, what I'm going to do is multiply it by a scalar. So here's my scalar here. Let's say I take that vector and multiply it by two. You can see that the same way that a vector scales up, so too will a complex number. So that doesn't become uh, two, three anymore. It becomes or 6. And I can multiply it by a negative number, and that'll change the direction of our vector. Multiply it by negative 1, and you can see we get the same vector just with negative uh, 2, 3. And obviously, if the vector were different, then we would get, we're just flipping it by multiplying it by a negative number, or we can flip it and scale it up if we want to. So, complex numbers, vectors, they are the same thing. So really quickly, we might just draw a couple here. Um, now, this is the real component. This is the imaginary component. Uh, two is just a real number. So put a little arrow there if we want, or we can just put the dot. 
Um, negative 3i, uh, that's purely imaginary. Here it is. 2 minus i, 2 minus i. Negative 2 plus 3i, so that's, that's the same as 2 plus 3i. 2 plus 3i, so that's 2 plus 3i. But it's multiplied by negative 1. So you'd flip it down here and you'd get um, 2. Uh, negative 2, negative 3. But you can just multiply through by that. That's the same as negative 2, negative 3i. Uh, and finally, negative 1 plus 2i, negative 1 plus 2i. All right, so very straightforward stuff. Um, now, we can look at this example here. Now, it says, let z1 equal 2 plus i, let z2 equal negative 1 plus 3i, and then represent the following on an argand diagram. Now, there's two sort of ways we can tackle this. One way is the same way that it's been tackled over here, which is just to sort of do the calculations uh, and, and write these down, negative 1 plus 3i. So those are all of those values just down here. But you can also think of it geometrically. You can think of them as vectors. So the first one is 2 plus i, so that's easy enough. The next one is uh, Z2, which is negative 1 plus 3i, negative 1 plus 3i. Now, the next one says negative Z2. All right, let's do that one geometrically. So uh, this is Z2. So there, that's like a vector there. Negative Z2 is going to be right there. Just spun around 180 degrees and going in the other direction. Uh, Z1 plus Z2. All right, let's see. This is Z1. That's Z2. So if I pick, so here's Z1. I'm going to keep Z1 where it is, and then I'm going to take Z2, and I'm going to move it across so it looks like that. That's Z1 plus Z2. So you can see I've done it geometrically there. And Z1 minus Z2. So I'm going to keep Z1 where it is, and then I'm going to take Z2, turn it into a negative, which I already have here, and then move it over here. And that is Z1 minus Z2. So that's it. That's how to look at complex numbers as vectors. I'm sorry if I've said complex numbers when I should have said vectors a few times but that's how much, how similar they are. So here's two bits of information that you really do need. One of them we already know. When, com when a complex number is multiplied by negative one, it spins around 180 degrees. And you can see we went from Z2 to negative Z2. It just spun around 180 degrees. So that one we know, and that one feels pretty good. When a complex number is multiplied by I, the new complex number is found by rotating 90 degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. And it's pretty easy to see why that is. Here's our example. For the complex number z equals 2 plus 3i, calculate both negative z and zi. Also show these results along with z on an argand diagram. So we've already done it, the calculations, but we're going to talk about one of them specifically. So z equals 2 plus 3i, that's easy enough. And again, you can think of it as a vector. Uh, negative z is just that one spun 180 degrees. We've done that, so we're okay with that. Now, what about zi? Watch what happens when you multiply by i. 2 plus 3i multiplied by i, you get 2 times i, which is 2i. That means the real component becomes an imaginary component. Think about that. Uh, and then we get this 3i times i, which means we get 3i squared, uh, which is 3 times negative 1, which means that the imaginary component becomes a real component, but it becomes a real component with the opposite sign. Think about why, why that is you're multiplying by negative 1. Now, this has the effect of swapping the real component and the imaginary component um, and rotating our dot ninety degrees 
anti-clockwise. Uh, so, very interesting thing. Multiply by i, the real becomes imaginary, the imaginary becomes real, and we rotate 90 degrees anti-clockwise on our argand diagram. And finally, we know that the conjugate of a complex number, z equals a plus bi, is equal to z equals a minus bi, Geometrically, this represents a reflection in the horizontal axis. All right, so z equals 2 plus 3i. The conjugate of that is 2 minus 3i. So we can draw that up. Uh, 2 plus 3i. 2 minus 3i. And you can see we're reflecting over the x-axis. And it's pretty easy to see why the imaginary component goes from being positive to being negative or vice versa. It's going to reflect backwards and forwards over that x-axis. All right, this has been a long video, but I hope that we're taking away the key point here, which is complex numbers, vectors, they behave the same ways. Um, and you should see a complex number and you should see it in your mind on an argand diagram, the same way when you hear a vector or see a vector written down, you see it as an arrow on a Cartesian plane.